what we thought we'd spend the first five, 10 minutes on is talking really about how banks view you, right? And, and I'm, I'm sure as you're going through the business planning process, you're, you're thinking about who the business plan is for. Is it for you? Is it for investors? Is it for bankers? Um, and so we thought we'd take just a couple minutes and how do we see, how do banks look at you? And I see over there somebody stole my thunder with the five C's. Mm -hmm. So we won't spend a lot of time on this, but maybe there's something in here that will be a little bit different. But again, uh, character, capacity, capital, collateral, conditions, uh, character is easy. It's just about trust. Lenders want to do business with people with integrity and people they can trust and people that they can work with and people who can make good uh, decisions and, and manage a business. Um, character is also about your team. And everybody has a broader team, even if you're a sole proprietorship. You have a, you have a team. You have a team of, which includes your financial advisor, your accountants, your attorneys, and anybody else that you have um, working you know, with you side by side. Their integrity is also important, right? I mean, bankers, when you go to apply for a loan and the banker looks at your financial statements and they know who prepared your tax return and they know who your legal counsel is, I mean, that gives them a, a good sense of comfort. Character, it's about your credit score. Your banker is going to meet you for once or twice, maybe once at your place, maybe once at his place, for you know an hour maybe at most, both times. And he has to make a character assessment based on that. He's going to cheat a little bit, and he's going to look at your credit score. All right, And that's going to tell him a lot about what he needs to know about your character. So know your credit score. Look at your credit score. Understand it. If there are things in there that are going to pop out, which, which happens, be able to explain them and be able to alert whoever it is who may be looking at it that this is, this is what happened and this is why, why it is the way it is. Um, and if you haven't really done a lot with your credit score uh, or you don't know what it is, keep in mind that these are the things that it's based on, right? It's looking at your payment history. Um, the length of credit history, how long you've had accounts open, uh, public records, bankruptcies, tax liens, uh, how many new accounts you're setting up, how many, how many inquiries, how many times people are looking at your credit uh, for loan applications or credit card applications, um, how much you owe, how much you use, right? If, if, um, um, if you have five credit cards and they're all maxed out, you know, that says something to the banker as far as, hey, what type of risk am I getting into here? Um, capital. The capital is about the balance sheet. Um, the balance sheet is, is a snapshot in time. Uh, and, and if I'm going over stuff that's already went through, I mean, you know, just, just kind of let me know. But a balance sheet's a snapshot in time. It's your assets, it's your liabilities, and it's your equity. Um, and what it does is, by itself, it gives you a picture of, of, of how much you really have in reserve and, and how, how strong is your business and, and able to take some financial, um, you know, kind of the ups and downs of the business. Over time, what a balance sheet does is it tracks the growth of the company. And a balance sheet, and I love balance sheets um, even more so than income statements. And the reason I like balance sheets is it shows you how much money you make. And it actually, if you look hard enough, it shows you where you spend it. Are you drawing the money out for yourself or are you putting it back into the business? And a balance sheet will tell you that. Assets. Balance sheet is, is divided into three areas. Short-term assets, which are your operating assets, intermediate term, and long-term. The short-term are your checking account, your cash accounts, your accounts receivable, your feed, supplies, um, inventory. If you have you know, corn or soybeans in the bin or things held for, for sale. Things that can be easily converted to cash. 
the intermediate term and the long term, sometimes you see these two combined. Intermediate term, they can be sold, but it takes a little longer to sell, you know, things like tractors and cars and machinery and equipment. And then you have your long term, and this is, obviously, this is, this is land, buildings, fixed assets, things that really can't be liquidated unless you're terminating the business. On the other side, liabilities. Liabilities are divided into the same categories as well. Um, and think about your business in, in what is your, what's your operating liabilities or, or operating assets, things that are liquid and things that are part of the day-to-day the -day business. And think about how much of your business is locked up in overhead, right? Things that, these are things, I mean, long-term assets, these are mortgages, things of that nature. Regardless of how your farm does, you're paying these bills. This stuff up here, in a really good year, your liabilities are going to be high. In a bad year, your liabilities should be down um, because it's, it, it should be part of the operation. Short-term notes are borrowed and repaid in the same year. They're used to support your working capital, which is a difference between your current assets and your current liabilities. Um, Intermediate is longer term, maybe three to ten years, and then obviously twenty to thirty years on the on the long term assets. Uh, I'm going pretty quickly on this. Does everybody everybody's okay? Everybody under kind of understands. Um, some of this can be really basic if you've seen it before, and, and some of it may be new. So let's just try a couple things here. Um, these expenses, things you are purchasing, right, things that you may take out a loan for, uh, greenhouse repairs, tractor repairs, dairy cows, and last year's bills. If you were to, to borrow, you're going to a bank for a loan, and you wanted to borrow for greenhouse repairs, is that a short-term operating loan or is that a long-term loan or an intermediate-term loan? What do you guys think? Greenhouse repairs would be long term because you're looking to recover that over a period of time, right? It's, a, it's not something that you do every year, so you do it and then you build over time. What about tractor repairs? Tractor repairs are actually a little tricky because tractor repairs and farm and equipment, there is there's assumed, right, there, there's a depreciation cost. So it's assumed that you're going to have an annual expense associated with maintaining your equipment. Okay, greenhouses are a little different because it's an asset. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a long-term asset. And although a tractor you're going to use over a period of time, it's assumed that you're going to have to make these repairs kind of on an annual basis. There's, there's kind of main operations and maintenance associated. So this is something that gets expensed annually and you would borrow for under a kind of an operating loan. Uh, dairy cows? Long term, right? You're gonna, you're gonna um, recapture revenue over a long period of time. And this is the one, this is the big tricky one here. What about last year's bills? What if you had a bunch of 2012 bills that you needed paid? Things that you just, that are part of the operations and things you accrued last year. What about last year's bills? Where, where do you, what category would you put them in? I'm going to give you the answer. It depends. And the reason it depends, it really depends how you're going to pay these bills. If you're sitting on a side, I keep pointing at Keith, but he's my grain farmer. So whenever I talk about inventory, I'm going to look at Keith. If he has a silo full of beans that are, that, or a silo full of corn that's being held for sale and he's holding it on to in, in February and March and he's going to pay it off with crops that he harvested last year, that's an operating expense. If the farm took a loss and he just doesn't have the money to pay these bills and the silos are empty and he's, he, he doesn't know how he's going to pay these bills, then that's capitalized, right? That you're going to pay over time, and you're not going to be able to pay that 
you don't want to pay 2012 bills with 2013 revenues, right? So that, that's where it kind of depends. But, and I know we're going very fast over this, but these are the things that, that we want you to start thinking about your business in terms of, right? Instead of thinking about your business in terms of, um, you know, tomatoes and corn and soybeans, start thinking of it in terms of, you know, operating expenses and operating costs and assets and, um, and, and, and you know, dollar bills and payments. Um, we'll, we'll skip over this. So how do you grow your business? When, when we say what increases net worth, I think an easier way to, to say it would be how do you grow your business, right? And your business can grow through a couple of things. Profitable production, right, which means you're growing the inventory, you're adding customers, uh, and you're selling product. You can also have some appreciation in the business as well in your real estate or maybe some of your other assets are appreciating over time. Gifts, inheritance, maybe outside investors. You can have additional people infusing cash into your business. Um, or on the other side, you can have forgiveness of liability uh, with family members or something of that nature. Those are all things that kind of drive the growth of your business. On the flip side, it's just the opposite. What can take away value from your business? Losses, right? Non-profitable production. That devalues your business. Depreciation um, in general, not just land depreciating in value, but all the equipment you have loses value every day, right? And that's something that we always want to stress to you is keep in mind, you know, as you're paying the bills, that's a hidden cost that always sneaks up on you, is that depreciation. Your assets are losing value every day in the field and eventually you'll need to replace them or put major money in, in to keep them upright. So when you, look at your, when, when you look at your profit and loss and you say, wow, I can't believe I made that much money, think about what's in the field and think about what you're gonna have to be replacing. Um, and then family expenses, obviously what you take out of the business um, and money that you sink into the business that will not generate a return for you. Um, that kind of sums up capital. Uh, I'll move a little quicker because I really want to get to Keith's part. Capacity is kind of your, um, that's the earnings pieces. Uh, cash flow, projection, your ability not only to uh, pay your bills, but also to service any debt that you have. And that's really done. You can monitor your capacity, just like through the capital. You monitor your capital through the balance sheet. You monitor your capacity through the income and expense statement. Um, and, and of course, at the end of the year, your income and extent expense statement all goes into the schedule of how many sole proprietors do we have? Do we have all corporations or partnerships or corporations? Um, who knows the difference between a, an income statement and a cash flow statement? Nobody? Okay. So real quickly, and again, this is... We're going really, really fast, but just little points to pick up on and, and to think about. When you're sitting with your, an accountant and you're doing your tax return, and here are my, here's my profit and here's my expenses, and at the end, you know, what happens a lot of time is we'll, we'll show a number that says, hey, you made a lot of money, and they'll say, well, it didn't feel like it. It always felt like I didn't have anything. And that, is, that could be cash flow. Think about the timing of cash in your business, right? And especially, it is so true in agriculture, almost more than any other business, because you are putting all your expenses up front in the spring, and you're getting the bulk of your revenue in the summer and fall, okay? 
So think about how you're going to be financing the cash outlay and where the cash is going to go once you receive it and how all that works. And whether it's done through savings or whether it's done through operating loans through banks or whether, you know, when you're sitting talking to your, uh, your seed supplier um, or, you know, somebody, another one of your suppliers, think about what the terms are. Think about what the payment terms are. And when they say, hey, I'll sell this to you, but it's cash only or um, net 30, think about what, what that means. You know, does that make sense? So it's not just about profit and loss. It's about timing of the cash. And that's very important for you to sit down on a monthly budget and kind of go through and say, here's how much money I need to spend each month, and here's how much income I think I'll have each month. Um, collateral, collateral is, um, I mean, let's be honest, collateral is, is, is the farm and the machinery and equipment, and you're really not thinking about that. It's there all the time until you need money, and then, you know, the bank seems to, that's all they want to talk about is collateral, 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 right? So, um, collateral does act as a backstop for the lender. It is, it is important to them. Um, it's valued by the appraiser. Fair market value. There are two types of values really with equipment. You'll hear accountants talk about book value and then you'll hear uh, banks and other people talk about market value. They're not the same thing. What a book value is, is a book value is an accountant will say, okay, um, you bought a tractor for $5,000. Uh, it's a five-year piece of equipment. We're going to take standard depreciation. Every year, it's going to lose $1,000 of value. At the end of five years, it's worth nothing. Okay, That's how accountants look at it for tax purposes. At the end of five years, that tractor still has a value. It has a value to somebody else for a sale, and it has a value to you and your business. So. When you're looking at your plan and your business plan, you should think in terms of market value, not book value. Don't get caught up in what the accountants tell you things are worth and what depreciation and you know, makers and acres and all these things. Think about if you were to take an asset and sell it to somebody, what is that worth to them? And think about what that is worth to you in your operation, not only from what can I sell it for, but how much revenue can I earn off this asset? What does this tractor mean to me in terms of revenue? Right? What would my revenues be with or without it? Conditions really apply to, to the loan. Um, you know, what conditions are, conditions are great because you can go a lot of different ways with conditions. Conditions can help maybe your credit score is not as strong as they would like it to be, or maybe you don't have a big net worth, or maybe you're not as profitable as you should be. Now, if all th or maybe the collateral is not as strong. Now, if you have all four of those things, that might be tough. But if you're lacking in any one of these areas, banks can prop it up with conditions by putting in covenants, maybe taking more collateral, maybe taking personal guarantees, maybe having co-signers, things like that to kind of balance it out. 